20. Now, it is my great pleasure to invite back onto the stage our heroes and heroines of the last few days, the ESCO Secretariat, so Karin, Catherine, Vito and Martin. We have chairs here for you. And you need to come up here. Wonderful. Because it is time to look at what you produced just before lunch. They asked you a series of questions. Four questions with lots of multiple choices and text boxes where you could put in your comments. Oops, don't show the first slide yet. Take that slide away. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. What we have been able to do during the lunch break through feats of technological genius, the like of which are reflected on the ESCO platform itself, is we've taken the raw data that you produced and we've put it on the charts. And that's for questions one, two, and three. And then for the fourth question, we have an amazing technological breakthrough called a flip chart. <laughs> and we have analyzed some of your answers there. But now let's have the first slide, if we may. How do you want to use ESCO? Wow! That's what you said. I don't know when you look at that data whether that reflects what your thoughts were. Right at the top, job matching at the European level. Now, when the team and I were talking over lunch, um, there was almost a collective sort of sigh of relief and enthusiasm. Yes, this is exactly what ESCO should be used for. And so there was deep satisfaction with this being a high score. And then there were some comments on some of the others, the exchange of information and enhancing job matching and career guidance. And I'm just going to turn to the Secretariat and just ask very quickly, when you look at these, what is the immediate thought that springs to your mind? Yeah, thank you, Martin. Um, before I come to the, to the individual things, I think one immediate thought that comes to my mind is that all this information is extremely valuable for us. So even though I must say there are no uh, extreme surprises for us, but it provided us with a much deeper understanding of what is really important for you, what are the challenges, and what do you have in mind uh, when implementing ESCO. So from, from that perspective, we of course, during the break, we didn't have the time to go in detail with, with everything, but I'm sure in the coming days and weeks, we will look much deeper into the feedback that we received, and we, we could already see that it was extremely valuable for us. Um, when, when looking at this chart, what I found very interesting is, okay, job matching on European level, first one, it's a bit what we expected because it's what, we, what ESCO is designed for initially, at least uh, with, with the occupations and skills competences pillar, which are already in place. Um, but then we see on the, second, uh, on the second highest in ranking already enhancing job matching and career guidance on a national level. And 23 uh, of, the, of the countries that completed the survey said, well, this ESCO will also help us with, to deal with the challenge on our national level. And uh, that, that was uh, a bit surprising for me to see that, that ESCO will be really uh, helpful also on a national level to deal with this challenge. Great, thank you. Karen, from your perspective, from the education field, what struck you? I was uh, very pleased to see that um, the development of transparent learning outcomes descriptions uh, scored so high. Um, initially, ESCO has been designed to be uh, a labor market tool, and of course, we'll, the qualifications are and skills competences are very important on the labor market. But then the side effect is that um, uh, qualifications it can also be really used for the world of, of, of 
well, education and training, as we have tried to show yesterday, and apparently um, people in the room agree with us, so that's a good sign. Thank you. Great, so that message has, has hit home. Katrin, from your perspective, anything that strikes you looking at this? Well, I've been working yesterday together with Aldo on the Twitter wall and following up very closely what came in. And one of the things that struck me very much was uh, the importance of including uh, private employment services and companies in the further future of ESCO. So I was extremely happy to see this also reflected in these results where we saw exchange information with private employment services and companies as the fourth highest ranked. So I'm very happy with that and I hope the people who tweeted it yesterday see that it means their message has arrived well and we will take it forward together with all of you. Thank you very much. Vito, last word to you. Uh, for me, what is striking when I look at this graph is that um, there is no really real focus on only one of them, or only one of these uh, items. So I think uh, even from the ex experience from my uh, dis in the discussions in my, uh, in my group, uh, I think we all ticked uh, almost uh, all the boxes. Um, so, which means that there, are, uh, there is a, a big scope for using ESCO in all the different uh, business cases. And in particular, I was very um, uh, struck by the fact that um, there is a high number of answers for sa um, statistical reporting. Um, it was mentioned in the previous days, uh, well, yesterday it was mentioned that um, how ESCO will improve also the vacancy monitor and the European skills panorama. I think uh, I had the impression here that this is also uh, holds true at the national level. Very good, thank you. Now, obviously, um, these were the multiple choice question data that we were able to process very quickly. You also made lots of other comments in the box. Um, from the audience, before we go to the next slide, is there anything particularly important that any of you would like to bring up or that you think are surprising about these uh, slides? Yes, right, here we go. Oh. Dun, da, 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 dun, da, da, da. Here he is, running away. Oh. Right. Yes, I would like to understand these figures. Is this a percentage or is this the number of the countries? Please. The data for this is number of the countries, number of the countries that tick the boxes. Number of countries that tick the boxes. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anything else that struck people? Anybody would like to make a comment on how are you going to use ESCO? Are you happy with this as a result? People who feel that this reflects what they discussed in their groups, hands up. <laughs> So I'm going to pick on someone who hasn't got their hand up. <laughs> okay, very good. If we could go to the next slide, please. Marvellous technology. It's called a scroll down. How about that? Um, how can ESCO be implemented? Wow. Well, there are some clear uh, leaders here. Mapping of national occupations, etc. Back to the team. What do you make of this slide? Is this what you were expecting or does anything here surprise you? It's more or less in line with what I at least personally expected. Um, I think when we look at mapping, mapping national occupational classifications is what we know already the most of at this moment and that will be the easiest or the first step to achieve when we talk about national implementation. So I'm quite happy to see this and it's, it's indeed not too much of a surprise. It's about the integrating qualification databases in ESCO, which is uh, good to see that uh, 12 countries at least see the importance of that. Because without having national databases linked to the EKF portal and therefore be shown in ESCO, uh, we lack uh, a lot of national qualifications. So that is the way indeed to, to have the, the, the value and the, and, and the, the, of qualifications in ESCO. So there is a big need to uh, indeed integrate the qualifications. Um, yes, um, uh, what struck me is that there is quite a high number of answers where they need more information to assess this. So probably um, this, maybe this is due to the fact that um, uh, it, it needs to be spelled out uh, how the process will be implemented and I think this would uh, really help to 
have better uh, knowledge and awareness of what has to be done. I actually wanted to comment on the same point, but from the different angle, because I wanted to say it's rather surprising that there are only 11 countries that state that they need additional information. But I think we can summarize, so we already delivered the message, uh, or we already passed it across for uh, more or less half of the countries, and the others still need information, so there is work to be done, and probably the truth is in the middle somewhere. Thanks. Thank you very much. Well, back to you. Anything about this slide? How can ESCO be implemented? You're going to have to do this. You're the people. I see some people laughing here. So this is obviously must have been very funny. <laughs> okay. We are wondering uh, which country uh, to, uh, chose none of the above. Ah. Does anyone want to... Oh, <laughs> who chose none of the above? Unfortunately, we didn't have time to go into the details of what none of the above would have meant. Um, that's going to happen, but we didn't have time over lunch. Anything important there? Can anyone remember putting that in? <laughs> no, very good. All right. We will look into that and we will find your comment and it'll be in the report. So um, we'll find that out. Jeremy. Can I just say one of the things that emerged in relation to... I can't get it very easily. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, emerged in relation to that last point about needing more information was that um, there are costs associated with this. Um, there are program implications in terms of managing the intercept of ESCO with some systems that have already been under the process of change or are currently under the process of change. That impact analysis has to happen before you can really answer some of those other questions. So I think that's certainly from the UK perspective, that was why we put our answer there. Thank you very much. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the UK that also said none of the above, because we tend to sort of, you know, do things like that. Next slide, please. Rolling, rolling, here we go. What are the key challenges? Oof. Now, something that struck me looking at this is we've got identifying key people, political support, stakeholder support. And really, you could take those three together, which is we really need to engage a whole range of different stakeholders at our national level, and that that is seen as a key challenge. But I would pick that up because my company does this sort of thing. So. That's fine for me. What about the panel here? What struck you? Who would like to make a comment on this? I seem to be always the first one to take up the microphone. I think one of the things that struck me most is that we have quite a lot of high responses on the predefined answers and only, I think, six, uh, six others. That gives me the impression that we are already quite aware of what the key challenges are. Nonetheless, I'm very much interested in what the six others are more in detail, to see where they're exactly lying and whether there is something we can do to meet their needs uh, on the short term. Yes. If I may uh, give a short um, answer, uh, to me uh, what strikes me is that um, political support and obtaining all relevant information are also are, uh, substantial answers and that implies that uh, we in the Secretariat will have a lot of work to do in the near future. So, but we are glad to do it and take that up. Yeah, what what didn't come as a surprise is that ESCO is an extremely challenging project. I think we knew that when we, when we took up the work uh, three years ago. I think the board is fully aware of that and it's also fully in line with the results of the first uh, stakeholder consultation that we made. So in practice, in my group, for example, that meant they looked at the list of six challenges and they said, yes, tick all of them. Huh? <laughs> it's, it's all true. Um, the most surprising out of these sticks for me was the technical compatibility of ESCO with national classification systems because I believe that uh, the way we designed ESCO, uh, this is exactly um, one of the key features of ESCO, that it is compatible with 
many other systems that can be uh, mapped to other systems in a very flexible way. So I would like to, to look more into that and to understand better what is the concern about this technical compatibility with, with other national systems. I would like to say that uh, updating all relevant information for me is a very important one. Indeed, without relevant information, you cannot make any decision or uh, implement whatsoever. And it also came out uh, out of the next uh, question, which we will deal with later. But there is still uh, a lot of communication and information to do. So indeed, a lot of work for, uh, for all of us here. There's something I've looked before. Um, I see here that ensuring sufficient resources is also one of the key challenges. Um, in the first slide, we, we looked into the use of ESCO, and there was, I think, only very limited responses to cost saving by using ESCO. So I'm a bit surprised by this, this slightly contradicting uh, answers, because, of course, financial resources is also implied here. So I'm very intrigued to go more into detail what actually is behind it and to get a better understanding. Right, and of course we get that when we look in detail at the comments. Um, question to you in the audience. Key challenges. Obviously these were the multiple choice questions that we put together. There are quite a lot of others. Would any of you like to bring out what some of these other challenges are that we don't currently see on this chart? Can anyone remember what they might have put under there? Gert. Um, okay. It doesn't make much difference, uh, but <laughs> I was there. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, uh, uh, one of our concerns and is uh, that we have to do a double exercise. We will have to, as a pest now, I'm hiding my maintenance committee, uh, we have to do a double exercise. We have to evaluate in detail what the value added could be from ESCO in the mission of VDAB, how we cooperate with the Belgian PES and other PES and organizations and partners. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we don't lose what we have built and that we know from our first line stakeholders that is good. So we have to do this double exercise and find balances. And I think this is a quite complex thing. And uh, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Excellent. Please. Uh, we have in our group discussed uh, the question of the quality of the content and translation as, the, as one of the most crucial points. Uh, for ESCO and that this is the main challenge in our, from our point of view. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, that we have uh, discussed that this is still a, 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 quite a way to, to get there. So. Excellent. So the quality is an issue. We also have on the Twitter wall, um, don't we miss the unbroken chain challenge in the labor market if one link of the chain is not there, uh, then we don't adopt ESCO. So that's another point there which we take up. Now I'm just looking at the time and what we need to do is move also to your final question which was the support and the information that was needed and what we're seeing is that there's quite a large overlap between that support and the challenges. Now I don't know if our intrepid cameraman can actually zoom in on this well, something might be happening. The camera is definitely pointing in this direction. It might appear in a minute, but let me just tell you what you've put down here because you probably can't see it where you are and not with my bad handwriting. This was question four, the support and the information that you require. And in no particular order, just as it came along, uh, one of the big issues was money, both at the national level, where is it coming from at the national level? Which ministries are going to pay? How is it coming? Where is it coming from? Then also a question, can we get the money from the European level, the European Social Fund and others? So this obviously is an area of support. From somewhere, we need to get money. 
That's what you were saying. Another big need um, that is required is the business case. Can we see how ESCO will actually work in practice? What practical proof is there that it works? Can we put together some pilot projects? And this links to the first one because also part of the business case is the cost benefit, which was mentioned on the first day. So if the cost benefit is clear, then in some ways the first question is also partially dealt with. So there's a strong link between those two. A big issue that came up and has been mentioned in the challenges is the need for information. And the information at multiple levels, at the national level, where do we go? Where are the publications in my language? Where are the presentations in my language that I can use to convince other people? Where do I get the information? There was even a question on, would it not be possible for ESCO to do a road show? Can we come round to different countries? So we can even get some music going or all sorts of things. Who knows? So it can be the ESCO road show. Wembley Stadium, here we come. Where do we get the information from? But then also, another aspect of that information is the technical information. We need to actually know at a technical level how we can do things, where is that information, and also linked to training. And this comes to another point that was mentioned, which is, can we have a methodology or guidelines for implementing, the important word there is implementing, ESCO. So how do I do this at my own country level? Very interesting, a number of people mentioned that this was the first time that their national institutions are meeting around this issue. And isn't it fantastic? Finally, I'm getting to talk to someone from the Ministry of this or the public service employer of that. And isn't this necessary and a commitment that we need to do this more? So in terms of support and information needed, there have to be more meetings at the national level with the relevant stakeholders so we can move it forward. To your question on quality, this came up quite a lot. The quality control mechanism, what's needed here is assurance. You're looking for assurance that the quality is there. It's mentioned as a challenge, but it's also mentioned as a request here. And so that's something that obviously is needed, links back up to the business case and all the other things. Linked to that is also the need for support from the private sector. Now we know that there's quite a few private sector representatives in the audience. I'm looking at one right now, he stood up earlier. Um, so your support is felt as a need in this to make ESCO real and that this also relates to the support needed from all member states. Uh, quite a few people mentioned that we need all member states to participate in ESCO in order for it to move forward. And this brings us to the last point which is patience. We need patience. This is ambitious. We're going to do it step by step. Yes, it's urgent. Yes, we need to move forward. There is no question of stalling or going backwards. But the way forward is step by step. So we need time. That is what you were saying in answer to question four. Are there any additions or things that we have missed that need to be added to this list? Aha. And then we must move to the next session. Once again, very short. Uh, in, in our group raised a question uh, about the uh, updating and maintenance uh, uh, issue. So uh, there is some uh, request to get information how the maintenance will be done of ESCO. Very good. Now, the process for this, ladies and gentlemen, is that the detailed analysis of all your responses will be done by the Secretariat in the next weeks. It then goes to the November board meeting. It's discussed in the November board meeting and following that it is put on the portal and it'll be in the news section. 
It will also be in the documents section. And you will all receive an email alert so that you know it's there. Now, Wallace, this is not a moment to reply to any of those things, but if there's additional comments that you wish to put in, because then we need to go to our next speed session. Here we go. Only some strategic uh, comments from the Commission uh, policy and political point of view. Uh, I'm extremely pleased with the feedback we've got from you, but no time has come from the Commission to provide you with feedback. Yeah, but I need my piece of paper, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to forget my ideas. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> so, Anakala has joined me. Please stand up, Anakala, because I'd like the constituencies to know you as well. Anakala is my alter ego in DG Education and Culture, and she's also entitled to represent the Commission and to commit it financially and legally speaking. So we are together, um, how should I say that, uh, relying on, Catherine, on Karin and Martin, who are representatives in the ESCO uh, Secretariat and leading the ESCO Secretariat, and we are providing with some sort of strategic uh, impulse into it, and we are both members of the board, which is chaired by Jeremy. The board, of course, is going to look at all <clears throat> the points and the comments you have been making, but ourselves as well in the Commission, we need to take into consideration your feedback. It is extremely important in order for us to move ahead with a strategic direction to be given to ESCO. There will not be, at the moment, there is no plan, I, I can commit on that on any Bible you want to submit to me, there is no plan to go for any legislation to force the implementation of ESCO. ESCO relies on you, and it will prove its added value simply if it is used by you. Hence the importance of your uh, feedback. I do agree with you, as does uh, Jeremy, that we need to go through an impact analysis and an impact analysis according to the different type of constituency stakeholders uh, we have. And I believe that Anakala will follow me on that and Martin and Karin as well. We will need to provide you, it's very, very practical, with guidelines for implementation. There is a lot of work to be there and I will insist on that in the next board uh, meeting. Now when it comes to the practical proof that it works, we intend to provide it to you very quickly with your rest. And by the way, I think you are already almost convinced about that because you pointed out in your replies to the questioner that the first use of ESCO will be on the front of job matching at European level. And there, there is a very strategic point to be made and I cannot agree really with the sense of patience that we should have. On the contrary, I believe there is a sense of urgency there are so many paradoxes on our labor market today. In certain parts of Europe, you have massive uh, uh, unemployment pockets. On other parts of Europe, uh, you have quite an impressive number of vacancies which remain unfilled. You have also figures circulating around 2 million unfilled vacancies. Well, we have to be careful with these figures because what is at stake there is also the dynamic, the natural dynamism of our labor market. But nonetheless, and we are launching a study on those vacancies. There are plenty of vacancies which we cannot fill. And this is something which is not sustainable. We have a responsibility vis-a-vis -vis our job seekers and vis-a-vis -vis our employers on that front. So we will also be looking at ways eventually to speed up a little bit the delivery of ESCO. And of course, this might have uh, some repercussion on the implementation of ESCO in uh, the different corners of Europe. You might want to add something. Maybe a word that is specific to the education area. Um, I take this opportunity that Wallace created for, to pass a broad message to say, to reinforce that the, the success of ESCO and the completion of ESCO depends to our commitment, of course, but also in a great extent to uh, the implementation at national level. And one very concrete thing that has to uh, become reality in the next 18 uh, uh, months, two years ahead, is that the qualifications pillar of ESCO needs to be populated and it needs to be populated with qualifications that exist already and this of course in the construction of ESCO depends on the EQF portal 
that on its own needs to be populated by national qualification databases. So this is a strong call here for those countries who do already have national qualification databases to bring uh, a, an interconnection to the EQF portal so that it can help populate ESCO and make the link between the three pillars a reality. So thank you for that. Oops, just need to pass you back those things. There we go. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all the hard work you did before lunch. As you can see, the Commission are taking very seriously your feedback. So thank you for all that effort, and thank you to our panel.